What is going on guys? Today we are going to see how to make particles follow a path. I get this question a lot and this time I'm gonna show you two ways of doing it, one with the particle system and the other one with VFX Craft. It's easy and it's free, plus you can create awesome effects. Quick shout out to my patrons for making these videos possible, links below and you will get access to many assets that you can use in your games. So, with that being said, let's jump right into this. So there is two methods of doing this, there are more, but these two methods are the easiest ones. Method 1 can be used with particle system and with VFX graph as well, while method 2 is exclusive to VFX graph. There is a third method, which is with iTwin, and I actually made a tutorial a while back on how to use it for particles to follow a path. You can check it out. You can also use other twins assets like do twin as long as they can follow a path. So first and easiest method, let's start by downloading this realistic smoke texture, which I made available for you, there's a link below. And by the way, this project was created with Unity 2021.2 in the Universal Render Pipeline. So once you have the texture, we can go ahead and with right click in the folder, we can create a material. I'm going to rename it as the texture, and then up here in the shader drop down menu, we are gonna go to Universal Render Pipeline, to Particles, and select Unlit. And this is going to be a transparent surface. And in the base map, we can assign the realistic smoke texture. So, an empty is going to be useful. Let's create one with right click. We can rename it to VFX underscore smoke follow path, for example. Reset to transform. And then with right click, we want to go ahead and create a particle system. You can also rename it to PS and discuss smoke. And down here in the renderer, we can assign the material we just created. And here we go, we have the smoke texture being spawned. We just need to tell the particle system that this texture is a flipbook. So let's turn this on. Say it's 4x4. And the frame over time must be a curve. And instead of going to 16, it will go to 15, because it starts at 0. Let's quickly adjust a few things, like start lifetime can be random between 0.6 and 1.4, speed can also be random between 0.5 and 1, and the start size random between 2 and 3, as well as the start rotation between 360 and minus 360, so the angle of the smoke is super random. And then it's very important that in the emission we say rate over time is 0, because we want this to be spawned over distance. Every time this particle system will move, it will spawn particles. 7 is a good value. And now, as you can see, every time we move, it spawns particles, but they are not being left behind. They don't leave a trail, they are still parented. That's because the simulation space is set to local instead of world. Once we set it to world, as you can see, we leave particles behind. Okay, this is pretty much done. Let's just say the shape is a sphere with a radius of 0.2. And then we can say down here in the material itself, turn on flip book blending and soft particles in the advanced options. Soft particles will smooth the texture every time it touches geometry. And flip book blending will basically create in between each frame to look smoother. We just need now to turn on custom vertex streams and copy these exact vertex streams down here in the material to the particle system. So it ends up like this. Once it is like this, now the smoke is smoother and every time it touches the ground, it fades a little bit away, looking very nice. Now that we have this nice smoke going on, let's see how to create the path. And thanks to Sebastian Lag, it's a super easy process. Go to the Asset Store, search for Bezier Path Creator, add this to your assets. And then if we go back to Unity in the Package Manager in My Assets drop down menu, Make sure that you select the Bezier Path Creator, download it and then import it. Once you have imported, you will get this folder down here. Now to create the path, it starts with an empty game object. I'm going to call it Path. Reset Transform, just in case. And then in Add Component, you want to search for Path Creator. All you got to do now is turn on Gizmos. You can move the red points around to wherever you want. The blue ones are to adjust the curve. 
And if you want, you can say it's 2D or top-down view. And it will automatically flatten this curve, for example. And with shift and left mouse button, you can add new points. I'm gonna create something real quick here. The idea now is that we select the particle system of the smoke. Let's collapse this. And in add component, you want to add a path follower. As you can see, it asks us for a path. We can drag and drop this one we created. And then we can control the motion type and the speed. We are going to see it in a moment because if you press play by now, you should probably already have a smoke following this path, which is awesome and simple as you can see. Let me just shorten the lifetime. And then you can, for example, say that it's reversed. It's like a ping pong effect. Or it simply plays one time which will immediately stop now because we are in play mode and supposedly it has already played one time. But that's super cool and so easy. And this method can also be used with VFX Craft. That's actually how I created this ice spiral attack, which by the way is from this tutorial, the main effect. So, just make sure that in package manager you have visual effect graph installed and in preference, you have experimental operators turned on. So let's see how we can use it with VFX Graph. With right click in a folder, we can create a VFX Graph, rename it, and we can also parent this to the smoke follow path 03. Let's already add a path follower script, drag and drop the path, and disable the ps underscore smoke. If we play this, now what will happen is that these default particles from VFX Graph will follow the path indeed, but they are not being left behind. Let's open up VFX Graph by pressing Edit. It's very simple to set this up. We can actually do it while it's in play mode. For the particles to be left behind, we simply need to click here. Instead of local, we want world. It will go to the 0, zero position of the world because we need a set position block Instead of W, we want L, which is local. And now it will leave particles behind. And that's it, that's how easy it is. Now for the second method, exclusive to VFX Graph, we are going to need another VFX Graph. We can create one in a folder with right click. We can rename it to VFX Graph underscore smoke. And we are also going to need an empty game object. You can rename this one and then reset the transform and drag and drop the VFX graph we created, so we parent this. Reset the transform as well, and then press the edit button to open VFX graph. You can press F to focus on your particle system in case you don't see it. What's important is that down here in the main texture, we assign the realistic smoke. Let's just increase the size, set size to 5. Oh, and the set size of our life, we need to set the composition to multiply, otherwise it will overwrite any previous value. Okay, and we are seeing the whole flipbook because we need to say in UV mode that it's flipbook blend. It will automatically blend between each frame, like we did for the particle system. And to animate the flipbook, we can use a set index over life. We can select this curve from 0 to 1, but the last key with right click, we can say it's 15. Here we go, we are animating the smoke. And now up here, we can disable the velocity because this is going to move thanks to the Bezier curve. Let's set a random angle. It can be random, yes. 360 and minus 360 in the Z. And then we can increase the capacity to 1000 and the rate to 64. Okay, so we got something to work with. And inside VFX Graph, we can sample a Bezier curve. That's right. The way we use it is by creating a set position block in the update particle. So it keeps on following that Bezier curve. Then search for sample Bezier. The T option is the time. It will go from 0 to 1 and it will interpolate between A, B, C and D. I'm not sure why we cannot add more positions than A, B, C, D. So for the time, the T option, we can use the age over lifetime of the particle. It goes from 0 to 1, but in reality it's between 1 and 3 seconds. 
And then we can create three vectors. Vector three, by the way. Call it position one, position two, and position three. Make sure you connect it to B, C, and D. And now it's very important that this L becomes a W because it means world, world space. Instead of local, we want it to be in world space. Because we are going to set these positions in the world. The A option can be local because it represents the position where we placed our smoke. And now we can connect this to the set position. And nothing will happen, which is normal. Because now we need to create three empty game objects. One for the position one. You can also assign an icon. Turn on gizmos, by the way. I'm going to push it up here. Create another empty for position two. Assign another icon. Push it up here and a little bit to the right. And then create another empty for position three. A new icon. And place it whatever you want. Now that we have these three positions, we can select the VFX graph itself. And we need to assign this position one, position two, and position three properties. Fortunately, there is a VFX property binder. It will bind anything we want to an existing property of the VFX graph. In this case, if we press the plus sign, if we go to transform, we want to bind the position. If we select this, we can tell it the name of the property, which is pause one, and the target, which is going to be this empty game object, simply drag and drop. We can add another position now, for pause 2, drag and drop to empty, and another one for pause 3, just like this. And as you can see the smoke, it will immediately start following those points. And if you move them around, you will notice it's a Bezier curve. Even though you don't have the curve on your screen, it's there. And VFX graph is following it. It would be awesome if Unity could improve this a little bit by seeing the line, by seeing the anchors, by being able to add more positions and as well to control the normals. So that's it for how you can make particles follow a path. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please like and subscribe. And if you want to get your hands on this project, it's all available on my Patreon page, where you will get access to many other assets. A big thank you goes to each patron for supporting me and a special quick shout out goes to the top tier patrons which are Alak Frost, Bug Al, Kruby Dubidoo, Derek Benson, Donald Thompson, Edward Chai, Eric Hudson, Goblin Plague, Guy Rapapar, Joan Herstrom, Leonardo Ferraz, Little Tsai, Lobster Posey, Maxim, Mograph Tech, Natsims, Oitsk, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, Shara Ravichanka, Stefan Zarkov, Try It Out, Very Suta, William Morris, Son Anchin, and Ingo Das. You guys are amazing and your support is really appreciated. I hope you have enjoyed this video and to everyone who watched this, I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks, bye.